Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Meeting. Uh, today we are joined with Bertram, our Common Raven Ambassador. As always, let me know where you guys are tuning in from today. If you guys have any questions, I would certainly love to answer them about Mr. Bertram. All right, now we're just sitting outside our little pavilion, uh, so we'll see how he does. If he wants to go for a walk, we'll do that. But otherwise, we're just going to have some breakfast this morning. All right? You're molten, bud. Yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, so, Bertram, Common Raven, they are the largest of the songbirds. So he's not truly a raptor, like our hawks and our owls. Uh, so he doesn't have those strong talons or strong feet that a raptor has, except his beak definitely makes up for it. So his beak is very, very strong. <laughs> he's very curious about everything that's going on right now. That's why you see him looking all over. Hi, Mom! Good morning, Chuck from our island. Welcome. Want some treats? Good boy. Oh, you just threw that one. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and so they are the largest of the songbirds. So he actually weighs more than our red-tailed hawk ambassador. Um, so he's very substantial for sure. Good morning, Teresa from Jersey. Welcome. Say hello. <laughs> um, Bertram does mimic, um, just like uh, Dante, our American crow, used to. Um, he, however, does not like to show off. Um, for those of you that have had a chance to come to the center, you know that Dante would say hi and good boy and a bunch of other sounds. Um, Bertram, on the other hand, he does make sounds, except he doesn't like to show off. Uh, so he actually only talks when he thinks no one is here. Uh, so he's... <laughs> Very funny. He barks like a dog. He makes a water droplet sound. Um, he says, ouch, don't do that. Come here. Um, what else do you make? And like a whistling sound I've heard him make too. Um, he also calls like a crow, which is really funny to hear. Because, <laughs> Ken, you're not a crow, but you talk like one. Um, because we do have wild crows and ravens that do hang out here. And then uh, Dante would always talk. And so sometimes he does talk like a crow. <laughs> uh, good morning. John, he is very, very handsome, I agree. Uh, good morning, Kim. Good morning, Deb. From York, and Ambrose, and Arlie. Would you, would you like your breakfast? Uh, so I'm actually going to give him some of his breakfast today, um, minus some of the gross stuff. Um, so he's going to get a platter right here um, that has some uh, dog food, cat food, uh, blueberries, zucchini. Uh, so he also normally would get... Um, some egg and then protein, which is today some mice. Um, I'm gonna feed him that later um, just to make sure that this is a positive thing for him um, because they are in highly intelligent. They are the most intelligent bird in the world. Uh, so we estimate these guys are about as smart as a nine or a ten year old human. Um, so he can solve puzzles, he knows, um, he has a bunch of toys and near and things to play with, so you kind of need constant enrichment. Um, because they are so intelligent, um, they can be on the more difficult side of the train, uh, just because they're so smart. They're smart enough to know, yeah, I know what you sit want me to do, but, uh, I have another idea instead. <laughs> um, so, after every training session, we do, um, yeah give Bertram another piece of his platter that he really enjoys, like his protein, um, to make sure that, to reinforce that this is a positive experience for him, um, because he is still in training. He's been with us for, uh, about a year and a half, almost two years now. Um, but, so he's clearly doing wonderful on his glove training, um, and has done a couple on-site programming, but because they are so large, they are on the more predator side of the spectrum. Uh, so Bertram does not like doorways, does not like enclosed spaces, uh, so he hasn't enjoyed his crate training, and so we just took a step back and we're getting him back to used to being walks um, and sitting inside large rooms, uh, which he's slowly getting used to again, right? Uh, we always want to make sure we end on a very positive note for him, um, just because he is so intelligent. Yeah, you're very, very sassy. Um, Chuck, hard to believe he's considered a songbird, right? Oh, nice, bud. <laughs> yeah, so he weighs more than a red -tailed, our red-tailed hawk ambassador, uh, so he's very large, um, sits quite different than our hawks and falcons and owls do. He's more horizontal. 
Um, so it definitely is something that we have to consider when we go on walks and training with him, just because his beak is very close to our face and our fingers <laughs> when we're training. So we definitely want to be careful that um, that beak is very, very strong. Um, they could easily puncture a human skull if he was in the wild and felt like he needed to. They'll, they're known for flipping turtles um, and eating turtles. Um, so that beak is very, very strong. Um, so we definitely want to be really careful about that. That's why you always see me with two gloves on with him. Uh, just to, yeah. Because he likes to play. He's like a puppy. Um, so he they explore their worlds with their mouths. And so he'll bite the glove as like a preening thing, which you would normally do in the wild. And it's not <laughs> always him being mean. It's just him exploring Good morning, Katie and Yvette from New Hampshire. Teresa, does he chew his food? Um, so they will tear their food with their beak, um, just like our rappers do. Um, but they're not gonna necessarily chew like we do. Um, so his he'll use that beak, yeah, his feet to hold his food if he really needs to. Um, and then they'll tear it apart with their beak. Oh yeah, scary trees. I know. I know. <laughs> But that beak is very, very strong. Oh, good morning, Anne Marie and a Ava, Ava and Courtney, Ify and Brad. What you goof? Good morning, Taylor and J Renee. Good morning, Beth. He is very, very handsome. Yes, you are. You want some more treats? You already ate your platter, but we can have other food. What do you think? Yeah, so this is actually considered training for him, um, because we are still working with him on the glove, getting him used to being with us, especially under enclosed areas. Um, we're not actually under the pavilion today, uh, just because the bench got moved. What? You're such a goof. What do you think? Yeah. I'm clearly much quieter after he's had his breakfast. Yeah. Like, I'm the one that's always in the background, making sure everyone says, knows I'm around, and say good morning to everyone. Good boy. Oh, you're okay. What is it? Uh, Chuck. He is an ambassador, because he was kidnapped out of the wild as a baby. Um, so he was actually a transfer to us from Avian Haven up in Freedom, Maine. Uh, so about two hours north of here. Uh, we had been looking for a Raven ambassador for a little while. Uh, it's because we had Dante, um, and Bertram is very substantial compared to a crow. He, they're about three times bigger, um, and they're much more intelligent as well. Um, so we wanted to have both just so we could show the comparisons and stuff like that. Um, so Bertram was found begging at someone's doorstep. Um, they had called Avon Haven of Freedom, said, like, Glass, please bring him in. If he's begging, something's probably wrong. Um, unfortunately, they did not. They kept him for about a month and a half. Um, and in that time, he became imprinted on humans. So Bertram doesn't realize he's a raven. Um, it leads to a life of confusion. Um, we have several imprinted animals as ambassadors. Um, Bertram, Henry, Ophelia, Lucy. Um, so they don't really know what they are, and that's really confusing. Um, so he actually still will talk... Um, he makes this little like, gurgly noise that um, they'll say to the older people, around, their older family members. I mean, we can tell he's more of a subordinate because he actually has still pink in his mouth, um, which the young have normally. Um, but then as they get older, they'll turn black. Uh, so even though he's... Good boy! Nice rouse! Nice job! Um, so even though he's two, he actually still has a mottled pink and black look in his mouth, um, telling us that he still sees himself as subordinate. Um, so that's why he's with us. He's about uh, two years old now. Um, so we have very high hopes for this handsome man. <laughs> right? Haley, good morning, and Olivia. We have ravens that visit our chickens very often. They're very noisy, but also very smart. Thanks for sharing. Oh, you're welcome, Haley. Yeah, you definitely want to be careful. These guys are very, very smart. 
Um, like I said, they are the smartest bird in the world. Uh, he's about as smart as a 9 or 10 year old human. Um, so they are very good at problem solving. Um, so <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> There's a lot of videos circling around the internet of um, crows and ravens like learning how to recycle from watching humans. Um, they are known to like put nuts and stuff in the... Uh, crows are known for putting like nuts in the road in like a crosswalk. And so they'll wait for the cross light signal to come on, go put the nut there, come out let a car run over it, and then once the light turns back on for the crosswalk to turn again, then they'll go back in. Good boy! Nice rouse, handsome! Good boy! Here you go! Yeah! Also, that little sound, if you guys heard it, um, that was, like, the BB subordinate sound that they will make. Um, it's kind of like, <laughs> Yeah. Um... Katie, you're almost get tired. Um, it's not so bad right now. Um, so there's a trick that you can do is kind of, yeah, stick, because I'm sitting for one, and um, so it helps as well, but if, a lot of times when we are standing, you'll sometimes see us put, like, our elbow in our hip, uh, which definitely helps. Um, it definitely, he, he's only about, uh, two pounds or two, two and a half pounds or so. Um, compared to, like, Violet or Gaia, our turkey vulture and great horned owl ambassadors, who are both about five pounds. Um, so eventually, yeah, he does get a little heavy, but sitting with my, um, elbow tucked in isn't so bad. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, Naomi. Welcome. Katie, I miss Dante, too. We all do. Um, he was an amazing ambassador. And Violet, now that she is back in her normal enclosure, um, so she's getting some extra walks and extra attention. Um, she's bored, and I think she certainly misses him. Um, so yeah, we all miss him. Say hello, Naomi. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for donating, Harold. That's really sweet of you. Um, as always, we are a nonprofit. We don't receive any state or federal funding for the work that we do. And so we are really, really grateful for all your kindness and donations because um, we couldn't do our work without you. So thank you so much, Harold. That's really sweet. Uh, Chuck, why are so ravens so afraid? Um, I'm not really sure why. They are known to be, it's called neophobia. Um, so neo new phobia fear. Um, so they tend to be afraid of new things, um, which is pretty common across the board with ravens, um, especially in captivity. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for being such a big bird and such a strong predator, um, it's very interesting to see um, because he is so strong. Yeah. But anything new, it's pretty much he throws a sacrifice to it. You can show off you eat your peanut. Like, I love my peanuts. Yeah. Oh, you dropped one, silly. Um, I'm not really sure why, though. You would think because they are so large that they wouldn't be, but they are definitely known to be neophobic. Yeah. Good morning, Jacqueline. And good morning, Matt. And you're trying to catch some more morning. Oh, thank you, Matt. Oh, yeah, we are here every single day at 10 a.m. Uh, with some of... The ambassador for the day, um, it's a nice re enrichment for them as well, um, and it allows us to interact with you guys still, even though in these weird times. Uh, so thank you guys, thanks so much for trying to join in, Matt. Good morning, Lori. Uh, we have not found out, the tests for Dante have not come back yet. Um, we did send some samples out to try to figure out what happened, um... But because he was imprinted, he had been, he belonged, someone had kidnapped him as a baby. Um, so it very could have, well could have been something mom knew. Um, mom knew something wasn't quite right, and that could have been why he ended up in human care to begin with. Um, it's always something we have, we look at when we are taking in, especially imprinted animals. Um, as ambassadors, just because we don't know why 
they ended up in human care. Um, like Bertram, we think, may have some internal stuff going on as well. Um, because as far as we know, he's just imprinted. He should be able to fly corner to corner all over his enclosure. And he generally doesn't. Um, so we think he might have some in, some soft tissue or muscle stuff going on that mom knew something was off. And that's why he ended up in human care. Um, so we have not found out officially what happened with Dante. Um, but we certainly miss him very much. <laughs> Good thing you keep me on my toes, though. Um, Teresa, Dante was our American Crow ambassador who passed away earlier this summer. Um, I mean, yeah, we miss him. Oh, well, thank you so much for donating, Lily. That's really sweet of you. Thank you so much. And Sarah, thank you so much for donating. What? You are bit <laughs> Why? You are very handsome. Oh, thank you so much, Lily. Um, so the center is currently not open to the public. Um, we do... We are still taking admissions into our wildlife hospital. Um, we're still taking pretty much just as many, if not um, as we were last year, without our without a lot of our volunteers, and also without um, our full intern and MCA staff that we normally have as well. Um, so we are hanging in there. <laughs> Weird times for all of us. Um, but we are, however, open for... What? What's what's so scary? We ever we are, however, open for um, private... We're calling them quarantine tours. Um, so you can book a tour on our website for up to 10 people. Um, and it's a private tour. Uh, so we are still not allowing the public, general public, on... Um, so these quarantine tours are a very controlled situation. Um, so you'll, you'll be led around with a staff member, meet all of our ambassadors, um, with masks, gloves, the whole deal. Um, because we can transfer coronavirus to our ambassadors, um, which has been one of the biggest things that have been we've been afraid of. Because obviously we don't want to get coronavirus as the humans here at the Center for Wildlife. Um, but it would surely be devastating if some of our ambassadors got it. Um, so that's why our, even our current off-site programming, we're not using any of our mammals right now. Um, just because our mammals can actually, what? Can get it. What? You're fine. How? You're fine. Relax. Oh. I threw the glove. Yeah. Yeah, Katie, he is. Um, it's been... Violet's definitely gotten a lot of extra attention and love over the last week or so since she went back into her enclosure. Um, it took her a couple days. She's like, wait, this is this is weird. Because um, now she's all by herself. and But she still has her big window that she can sit out. She's, she's very interested in what I'm doing right now. Um, so she... I'll flip the camera so you guys can see her. And so she is sitting right there, uh, up in her window. Right, Bertram? Please don't bite me while I have the camera. Yeah, so you can see that little spot right there, he is currently molting <laughs> and replacing that feather. He has a lot of pin feathers on his legs, too, right now. Hey, that's my phone. Rude. <laughs> Please don't break my phone. Yeah. You're a handful, Mr. Man. <laughs> Hi, Dad. <laughs> Good morning, Cindy. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, it's always a, certainly a goal to teach you guys about our ambassadors and why we have them. Uh -huh. Yeah. And if we get a little entertainment out of our full of personality ambassadors, then that's a plus two. Want some more treats? Good boy. Yeah, nice job. <laughs> You're such a goof. Come on. You want to go for a walk? You want to go explore? 
I just want to stay here. Are you okay right here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes it is uh, kind of hard to tell in the wild if you're looking at a crow or a raven. Um, because you see, what? A big black body. Um, but they're, if you're close enough to see their face, um, sometimes you'll hear a crow is a bird with a beak and a raven is a beak with a bird. Um, because that beak is huge <laughs> compared to the rest of his skull. Um, they also have different tail shapes and wing shapes. Um, and then they're also three times bigger. Uh, so, like I said, he weighs more than a red-tailed hawk, where our um, crows are a little bit bigger than a blue jay. Um, so that is one way that you can tell the difference. But they do, they're both highly intelligent. They're both in the corvid family. Um, so that's our crows, ravens, blue jays, magpies. Yeah. Good boy. Nice rouse. Uh, so that's what you guys just saw is a baby behavior that we really like to see. It's called a rouse. Uh, it means that he's comfortable, he's relaxed. Yeah. Yes. Dust all over you. Are you preening? <laughs> Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Ooh, you dropped a peanut. Want a peanut? I need you to take it. Okay. You're just gonna... Okay, I'll hold it for you. <laughs> he is very feisty, Chuck. Um, that's definitely due to his intelligence. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, Katie, it's been really cool um, to see both Katie and my own family has been tuning in. Um, I currently live four hours from the, a lot of my family, um, four to eight, eight hours away. Uh, so this is how they get to see what I do every day. <laughs> yeah, I get to take ravens and v vultures on walks. Yeah, I do. You're such a goof. <laughs> uh, good morning, Priscilla from Winthrop. Yeah, we. I love crows too. Um, the the crows and the ravens are just they're very misunderstood. Um, sometimes they do get that bad rap because they are messing with people's trash and stuff like that. And they are both considered scavengers, so Bertram will eat literally anything. We haven't found something that he won't eat. Uh, so they'll eat dead, alive, fruit, veggie, egg, dog food, cat food. They really don't care. Um, <laughs> you, in particular, will eat literally anything I give him. So, <laughs> um, But because of that, they are smart enough to know our trash cans. Um, and we actually have a couple neighbors here on Mountain Road at the center um, who, because we have a couple of wild ravens that do like to hang out around here. And so they quickly learned that they had to put locks on their garbage cans because the ravens were helping themselves and getting trash all over the road. Um, <laughs> yeah. You're just so smart. You're going to get food wherever you can and you're smart enough to be able to figure it out. Teresa, why is a group called a murder? Um, so the murders with the crows, um, I'm not really sure why. But on the, related to that, though, um, so if any of you guys have ever seen a crow funeral, um, I don't know if the ravens do it, but I know the crows definitely do. So you'll see if a crow passes away, you'll see a group of crows kind of just hanging out around them, trying to... Uh, looks like they're having a funeral, but what they're actually doing is trying to figure out what happened, what's going on, how they can protect the rest of the family. Um, the crows are much more social than the ravens, so the crows you'll see in these massive groups, um, hundreds of birds up to thousands of birds. Uh, yeah. Especially roosting together, um, we, but we don't see the ravens on that same scale together. You'll see usually a couple together sometimes, but you're not going to see those big groups that you see with the crows. 
Oh, it really is a dream job, Lily. Um, couldn't ask for better. This is the best job ever. <laughs> I love it. Good morning, Michelle. We miss you. Hey, we miss you. Yeah. Yeah, you want more treats? You want more treats? Yeah. What if I, can I put you there? So they can get a close up. I'm trying to get him close without also putting my phone or my face in danger <laughs> here. Yeah, so you always see that with Bertram, we always have two gloves on. Because um, he's sitting on one glove. Um, not for his feet for protection, but definitely from his beak so in case he wants to play. Um, and then handing him food. It's, sometimes you like to nibble and preen. <laughs> He is very, very handsome, Jacqueline. Yeah, you are. You're such a good boy. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, right oh. now, he's also sitting in the sun, so he's like kind of flexing his feathers, I guess you could say. Um, so there's sun coming through the tree line right now. Yeah. You have dust all over you. Yeah. What do you think? Good boy. Nice brows. Nice brows, yeah. Good boy, Bertram. Nice job. Don't bite my finger. Hey! Um, so as always, if you guys have any last questions, I can certainly answer them. Um, but otherwise, we're going to go get everyone else fed this morning. And as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, and thank you guys for still continuing to hang out with us every single day. Um, it's a great way for us to get to actually talk and see you guys while we are in this weird time and not having our full programming schedules. Um, so thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out with us. Oh, and going Effie. And Eva, he's magnificent. <laughs> yes, he is absolutely magnificent. You are. Um, there's actually a story right now with um, the ravens that hang out at the London Tower. Um, because during the pandemic, people aren't visiting. Um, so they went from thousands and thousands and thousands of visitors every day to a couple hundred. And so the ravens at the London Clock Tower are bored and they're leaving. Um, which has some people worried because there's a legend that if the ravens leave the London clock tower, then the whole um, government's going to collapse. And so they're very worried and trying to get um, people to just come hang out and throw food at the ravens um, because they know that's where they were, they've been getting fed there for hundreds of years. And so they're afraid that the ravens are going to leave because of this pandemic. <laughs> right. Um, Chuck, ra some ravens do come down and visit Bertram. Um, they do. We do have a couple that will hang out around here. Um, I've never seen them like up close to their enclosure, but they will sit like nearby and talk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, John <laughs> and Katie and Lily. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Hey. Oh, you're welcome, Emma and Jacqueline. Yeah? You ready to go back? Um, as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out with us. And we will see you guys tomorrow at 10. Say goodbye, Raven. Bye, Bertram. Uh, Deb, the, Lon the London Clock Tower. <laughs> you're welcome, Teresa and Katie. Say bye, Bertram. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone.